in the next 90 minutes or so i'm going to cover what this platform is about and how you can utilize it to your advantage broadly two types of topics one is uh, productivity and the other part is uh, security because in real life we work and whatever work we do has to be secure it has to go hand in hand what i have been doing with literally thousands of customers over the last 30 years is um, to improve their efficiency so there are basically two types of work we do one is structured work that means something which is well defined everything is known the person who is doing the work has expertise and experience in addition to that we still spend lot of time doing unstructured work so unstructured work typically happens on office tools what happens there is structured work we have tried to automate as much as possible 50% time goes here 50% there approximately so this part is very well managed doesn't matter small company large company which role which department things are very well laid out and we are continuously improving but when it comes to office platform when i say office i'm not just saying word excel powerpoint with its one drive teams all of them put together unfortunately despite those products being there for over 30 years now there is no standard operating procedure people just do whatever they feel like as long as the output is there and it's correct nobody cares how the process was done and that is where not just you or india the entire world is wasting humongous amount of for time every day by not realizing that there was a much better smarter way of doing it so from an efficiency point of view in manufacturing what happens there is raw material and there is finished goods so you input output if you want to increase the output increase the production obviously you have to increase the raw material but when it comes to unstructured work there is only one input the input is not the software input is you your time your precious life so we want to minimize that input and maximize the output that is what we are going to see and if you can manage that and how you will manage that i will show you but if you do that some things will go down significantly and some things will go up absolutely significantly now how this happens of course showing it as on a slide on powerpoint is easy but i am actually going to show you how this happens the problem is that it is unstructured work and because it is unstructured we think it is not possible to structure it and that is where most of us are wrong so how do we structure something which is by definition unstructured so let me explain what i mean by that so take an example for a these are types of work we do now of course in order to do each of these work i need to have knowledge of that domain and my industry and my business that is the structured part but in order to do that work in addition to the domain expertise i also need to do unstructured work for example here i'll get need to get data from people consolidate the data interact with people here also i'll have to search for what others are doing interact with people get their inputs create a draft policy then get it finalized so each of these has a structured and unstructured component so that unstructured component is what we are going to focus on now in order to do that we have to classify what kind of unstructured work we do and then maybe we can put something together so if you classify the kind of unstructured work we do well the common things there are commonalities but they are not obvious here is the description of what we do across the board any industry any role any seniority all of us are doing this we are creating something we are storing something we are always working with each other and so on so for all these needs microsoft created apps over the last 30 years of course it didn't happen overnight but now we have a full platform which satisfies these needs and that entire platform is called office 365 now many of you may have it many of you may not have it some of you may have some other platforms doesn't matter just think of what i'm showing and then try to think is it applicable to me in my environment if yes then note it down and then try it out when you go back 
Incidentally, all these tools are also available on mobile platform. Now many of you may already have Office 365. So I just want to quickly ask you, if any of you have Office 365, you can mention that. Because Office 365 already has all this. But if I ask people, how many of you have deployed all of these things on the mobile? Very rarely do I get an answer saying all of this is deployed. So why does that happen? Because this platform is designed in such a way that for every purpose, every need, there is a solution. But that may not be obvious to people. So if I just show you icons like this, it is going to be confusing. Right? That's why I put it in the correct place. And now because I put it in the correct bucket, you can understand it better. But wait, we'll go through this very quickly and then we will go deeper. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote, whatever they do, you already know. Sway is a way to create web pages quickly without knowing programming, HTML, JavaScript, responsive design, nothing. You create content, you can pick it up from Word, PowerPoint, wherever and make a web page and then share it internally or externally. Forms is for surveys and quiz. Visio is something which you may not have known. Some technical people may know Visio, but that was a separate product. Now, Visio is a part of Office 365. So, whichever version of Office you have, you will see Visio there. A light version of Visio is now available here. You can actually create much better block diagrams using Visio rather than doing it in spelling in PowerPoint or the default Word Excel PowerPoint shapes. So this gives you many stencils. This is basic flowchart shapes. They are available in office. But look at what else is available. There is a large collection of all kinds of diagrams and components which you can use and then simply drag and drop. And next one you want to drag and drop. What do you do? And if you want to connect it to something, you have two choices. You can actually drag and drop here or better still you decide the connection and from there you can start connecting. So creating professional diagrams is much easier and more productive here. Same concept, less effort, more impact. So that's about Visio. Whiteboard is something which has always been there as a part of Teams. Maybe all of you are already using Teams, but Whiteboard is highly underutilized. I am sure you have noticed it when you go to share in Teams, you see whiteboard, but not many people are using it. Remember before COVID, every small conference room had a whiteboard. In fact, smallest of rooms had only whiteboard and that was used as a projection screen. So we are used to whiteboard. We just never used it. Yeah, so it's a very powerful tool. In fact, it's available as a separate app as well. And when you go to the whiteboard, you don't need a special stylus or touch screen. You can just use keyboard and mouse. The bigger part is everyone who is in the meeting can collaborate on that whiteboard from wherever they are. So this works on browser version of Teams, desktop version of Teams as well as mobile version of Teams. And it has many amazing capabilities. It also works just by scribbling on the mobile as well. No stylus required. And it has amazing templates for the most common reasons why we use whiteboard, including these. So if you have not explored it, start using it. It's a part of Office 365. So you'll be surprised to know you don't have to go to Teams to use whiteboard. You go to Office and then whiteboard by itself can be used and also used in conjunction with Teams. So brilliant application. So these are the templates. This is for brainstorming. This is for Kanban and so on and so forth. If you're not done so, please explore whiteboard when you go back. Don't explore it now, by the way, because I'm going to show so many things you will miss the next one. Now coming to managing files, we will talk about it in detail. But even today, even today, most people, when they create files, they store it on local drive. That is a disaster from efficiency as well as security point of view. Your file should either go to OneDrive, if that is what you do primarily. If it is a file you are going to control, it should go to OneDrive. If it's a file related to a project, then it should go to Teams. Teams is SharePoint. So departmental shares, if you are putting on SharePoint, convert them to Teams. It improves 
utilization and security if you are capturing data in excel stop doing it start using list basically it's sharepoint list but has many many other benefits including live reports back in excel another one is stream if you have data which is video type it should go to stream and what is the benefit of putting it on stream because it's video it automatically converts all types of videos that's number one and second part of that is because it's stream and it understands how videos work it optimizes bandwidth utilization as well and because of that you will not only save on bandwidth it also gives you something else if you enable or set the language in long videos a lot of you have training videos put them on stream and after you upload them change the setting of the language to english and then it will create a searchable transcript so long videos or even meeting notes which are in video form meeting recordings you can actually search on text and learn or remember what was said in the meeting very very quickly so bottom line if you have videos the only place for videos is stream do not put them on file share or sharepoint or any other file system putting videos on file system is inefficient now talking about work all of us do work all the time but there is no standardization about where to put the list of work so because there is no standard people do whatever they like so here is the standard my work should be listed in outlook task folder and you can see it on mobile on to do app our work means shared task list should be created in planner because sharing and collaboration is going to happen in teams add planner to teams now we will see this in detail a little later but before we go there outlook everyone knows how to use email so i'm not going to talk about how to use outlook i'm going to talk about when not to use outlook because that is a bigger skill to acquire today for decades we have been using email as the default for any kind of collaboration that worked for us fine but now there are better alternatives so instead of using that better alternative if you use outlook that is itself inefficient the classic example of that is bookings everyone has calendar everyone has meetings i'll give you two examples one internal one external let's say i am the boss and i want to conduct review for some 15 of my direct reports that's situation number 1 so i need to block half an hour for each of them independently second i have i am in procurement and 15 vendors have given quotation for some procurement requirement and i need to interview each vendor again for half an hour in either case i have to waste my time or my admin assistant's time or someone else's time to block those half an hour slots 15 times now that is something we think okay that is to be done there is no choice no there is a choice what is the choice bookings is the choice so it integrates with outlook calendar you decide 15 slots beforehand and publish a single link for those 15 slots to all your direct reports or all vendors then they can go to that link block the time depending on their convenience there is no human interaction happening anywhere and when someone blocks that the next person clicking on the same link will not see that blocked item when someone blocks it you will be informed and if you want there can be an approval stage also finally they will get an automatic teams meeting request and if you want they can change the timing as well all of this integrates with outlook but we didn't touch outlook at all anywhere less effort more impact this is the default part of office 365 i just told you two use cases i'm sure you're already thinking of many other use cases teams we will go in detail if you have shifts then amazing tool available right within teams called shifts we will see that also in detail but there is all these are collaborative tools this is a passive tool in the sense it observes what you are doing and tells you who are the people whom you are document uh, collaborating with what are the common documents in your context and your collaborative context and so on so if you quickly want to find a document there may be a better place than thinking 
where is that mail where is is it a word file or a excel file so if you have not gone to delve just go there once and see is it relevant to you yammer is a very different kind of collaboration tool and many people despite having it have either not noticed it or they have some weird inhibitions about putting something on yammer so remember collaboration means working with others but depending on what kind of collaboration you have to choose the right tool i'll again give you an example i have a new product i'm launching i have 50 people in or whatever 5000 people in my company and uh, i want a brand name to be suggested by anybody it's like internal crowdsourcing what will i do yes i can send a mail to everyone boring inefficient i'll have to re- look at so many mails yes i can create a team of for whatever thousand people just for one purpose not worth it so yes i can put it on intranet but intranet is typically read only read write is difficult so that's where yammer comes in open transparent collaboration everyone is a part of yammer by default you just enable it post that question there maybe you want to gamify it also people can post people can discuss people can like share and then in a collaborative open transparent manner you choose the best one that is how yammer is to be used so even though you may think that there is overlapping functionality amongst these actually if you go one level deeper and think about the use cases there is absolutely no overlap why would the same vendor in this case microsoft create two products which do the same thing it does not make sense so if you think there is overlapping functionality that means you need to think a little more understand the product and then see which need of mine will this satisfy excel all of us use every day but power bi is an adjunct to excel it's not a replacement and this can analytically enhance despite you already having the same data for many years it will improve what you understand from the data it's not just about the speed of analysis it's about what kind of analytics you can do and uh, while you are working this is a very powerful tool which is working behind the scenes and observing how you work and it actually sends you a mail every day it's called earlier it was called cortana daily briefing now it's called viva daily briefing basically you get a automated mail every day saying you have sent so many mails to each other in the past and maybe you have committed something have you done it you didn't formally put it as a task so it actually analyzes using ai and you get reminders about some things which you may have forgotten a brilliant thing and if you go to my analytics it will give you much more information about how you are working whom are you working with are you getting enough time to focus and many many other things and then finally automation without programming you can do all kinds of automation using these three tools so this was a very quick overview of the platform but now we will go into detail power automate is required for creating workflows using anything so if you go to power automate let's say you have a sharepoint list and you want to create a workflow as soon as some list item is added or updated you go to power automate then you say create automated flow there are multiple types by the way automated and then you decide what is the trigger because the workflow has to start somehow that somehow in this case is sharepoint so you go to sharepoint then you'll say what are the different things which can happen in sharepoint can trigger a workflow action so for example typically it will be when a new item is created so then it will add that as the trigger now assuming that is done you choose the site and then you say okay after that what do you want to do those are the actions and again actions can be across not just sharepoint but literally 600 plus different tools which are not just microsoft you can see google apps here you can see twitter here and hundreds of third party apps so you can potentially have a trigger happening in outlook and actions happening in twitter or any combination of these so that's how you use power automate for all this now where does power apps come maybe you have a list in sharepoint you want to customize ui for that for that you use power automate but when the record is submitted through the app then the action is still going to be done by power automate so power apps is for ui 
Power Automate is for automation behind the scenes. It can work independently as well as with Power Apps. So what I showed you just now are all the user level components of Office 365. Now, as I said, all of them run on browser. Many of them run on desktop. May all of them almost run on mobile. So when you have things running on devices like Windows and more mobile, uh, Android or iOS, all this is generating data. All this is being done by official users. So you need to manage security. Security needs to be managed. Compliance needs to be managed. Privacy needs to be managed. So from that point of view, what do we want to do really? Well, from the point of view of security, there are many things to be done. Yes, protection of what? So identity protection, which is logging, active directory, threat protection, device management and device protection, cloud apps protection, because many of us are already using third party cloud apps as a part of official business. Plus we have shadow IT. And then of course, most important, which gets least amount of attention is information protection. What information? The same files we are creating using office, same emails and chat we are managing. So all this put together is called Microsoft 365. Classified the type of work we do in this manner. Now let's classify the kind of work we do in a different way and see how we go about doing it. So I said, okay, we will do some collaborative work because there are two types of work really. The kind of work I do, which I can do on my own completely. I don't need any help from anyone or there will be some work which someone else is involved. So let's focus on this part first, my work. Then we will talk about teamwork. Even here two types, what I execute and I want to get it done, but I'm going to delegate it. So let's get that out of our way quickly. Now, when it comes to my work, how do I know what is my work? Of course, I have a job description. I break it down into smaller pieces and do that. You know the story, but the problem is where is that work listed? That's not the problem. The work is listed, but it is scattered all over the place. Problem is you can't prioritize. You can't look at it. It's one list. If it is not in one place, how do you hope to manage it properly? That's the problem. We know that there is a problem, but we just got used to it. So what is the solution? Problem is scattering. Solution is unification to so put it in one place and that place cannot be personal liking or preference. That has to be the most suited place for managing the task list. And that happens to be Outlook task folder, not the to-do list task folder. So go there, wherever the task originates, just add the task, put the due date and you are good. Now, if you want to delegate work, no problem. Don't delegate by sending email. That's a very bad habit. Everyone has, even if you want to delegate work, please go to task folder, but not from here. Go to this place, create the task, add the task details, due date, and most important, assign task, the most powerful button for delegation. Then put the name of the person. Now that person will get a proper accept decline kind of task request. If they accept it, it'll go into their task folder. When the market has complete, you will be notified. Entire workflow is built in. But some of you will say skeptically, if that person doesn't act on anything, even then it is better because now you have a copy of that task in your task folder as well. So when you go to your task folder, now you see a single list of all your pending work, my work, delegated work, my work, delegated work all together. This itself is good, but this is just the first step. Now you have to execute the work which requires time. So at least for the important strategic time consuming work, you should block time in advance and you can block time only in calendar. So step two is open the calendar, open this task folder in a separate window, scan through your work and drag drop important work and block time for it well in advance. That is called time management, taking an appointment with yourself to do your own work. Now you are in a better shape. So now onwards, Outlook doesn't just mean inbox and calendar. This is the most important folder. And of course, if you want to see it on mobile, that's why you must install to do app. Hardly any customer I see has installed to do app. Users don't know. 
IT just installs whatever is bare minimum and people are still struggling with their task list. So it syncs with Outlook. In fact, even on mobile, if you have a task and you want to if I am from mail, you can create a task from there itself. So both ways sync. So now just knowing this is not enough, try it out. And if you can convince everyone in the company, make it a standard operating procedure. So this is a very important concept, not just for task management, but for everything which I'm saying, just knowing it is not enough. Just you knowing it is also not enough. Just you and your direct reports or your team knowing it is not enough. It is so useful. Why shouldn't everyone do it? So create standard operating procedures and give the benefit of efficiency to everyone. So this is how my work can be better managed. Now let's talk about our work. That means teamwork. So as I said, teamwork also comes in two flavors, single piece of work and multiple people involved or multiple tasks and multiple people involved, which is basically a project. So let's talk about this. So if I have some work and I'll go back to the same list of sample tasks, this is one task. But in order to actually do that task, imagine how many sub activities I will do. Maybe first I will figure out what data I already have from past quarters, years, per forecast, put them in one folder somewhere. And then I will try to build something. Then I'll realize I need inputs and data from people. So some people I will call, some people I will chat with, some people I'll do meetings with, some people I'll send email. After all that, they respond. Again, copy paste, copy paste. Then a draft version, mail to boss. Then boss suggests some corrections, couple of rounds there of email. Finally, the final draft is ready. Then we have another meeting with the share stakeholders, another round, and then that job is done. So although it was one task, 25 different activities happened and that is how we work. So tell me this sound familiar? Yes or no? Does this sound efficient? Yes or no? So give me a combined answer. It's familiar? Yes or no? Combined? Yes or no? Efficient? Yes or no? Your answer should be yes, no, 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 yes, yes, whatever. Give combined answer. Type it in chat. Does it sound familiar? Does it sound efficient? Don't just say one answer. I don't know that yes is for what. You say yes, yes, no, no, yes, no, like that. So both are yes. Okay. Does it sound familiar? Yes. Does it sound efficient? No, it is not efficient, obviously. It doesn't matter which platform you are using, which tool you are using. It is not efficient because we never attempted to make it efficient. And that is what Microsoft has done. What am I saying? I'm not saying don't do chat or meetings or emails. All of those are required, but don't use a different app for each. That is where we get frustrated, waste of time, confusion. So Microsoft created one app which can do all that. And unfortunately, even today, people have not understood this part of Teams. So Teams is capable of doing all of that and more. So whatever random activities I mentioned, again, sounds unstructured. But as you know, to make things which are unstructured, structured, we have to classify them into broad categories. So what are those categories? I was either asking something to people or I was asking them to give me inputs in the context of a file. And I was doing that either on some kind of collaboration, either meeting or chat. So still there is some kind of sanity there. So now each of them has to be done efficiently. Now anything not urgent, you will send a mail. Anything urgent, you will do chat. That's a common sensical thing. But even after all this COVID and all that, I am noticing that many, many people in largest, smallest companies doesn't really matter. What are they doing? Well, they are using chat because it is urgent. Why do we have to do that? Because I want a faster response and email is slow. So what do I do? I have to use chat. It is obvious, but which chat that people are not aware. Despite seeing almost every day something being hacked either by hackers or governments or whatever it is using personal chat software 
people still use personal chat for official work exposing not just the organization but themselves also so this is a very important thing to understand please do not use personal chat for official work now what to use of course there is teams chat now many people may be using teams chat but not as a standard operating procedure because they don't understand the risk involved so these are the business risk and these are the individual risks involved of using personal chat applications now how do you know they are bad well not don't take my word for it many people use cloud applications now whatsapp is on cloud telegram is on cloud hundreds of chat software on cloud many official applications are also on cloud you may be using some crm on cloud erp on cloud hr management on cloud so when you have cloud applications which are becoming a part of life you need to understand how good or bad that cloud application is from security point of view and that is understood by going to what is called as microsoft cloud access security so if you go to cloud access security what happens i'll just show you that in microsoft there is a component of security called cloud access security and what does that do it actually has created a large list of all kinds of cloud applications 30000 of them and for each application there is a score risk score and these are categorized amongst various types so if you go to the risk score 10 is the highest means safest if you see the score for whatsapp that score is 6 and this is not some random number microsoft has generated it is six because so many things which are required for security compliance and privacy are not implemented by them don't you think they know about it absolutely they know about it they have chosen not to do it now compare that with teams chat is still chat you can just type reply to chat that's it but look at the difference now if i see the same score for teams obviously it is 10 no not obvious why not obvious because you will say it is microsoft microsoft gave itself 10 no look at all the components are there now it is not just a tick mark for each of them there are procedures there is a large complex document to be read implemented externally audited and all that that effort microsoft has put so just by virtue of chatting on teams you are automatically getting the benefit of it why would you not want that also many people think telegram is safer no telegram score is actually less and it is not that microsoft gives high score to microsoft itself google hangouts also has a score of 9 few things are missing because it's a personal thing socks maybe it's not relevant for them and gap is not relevant but teams is designed to be convenient plus secure and that part many people don't understand so please start using teams for official work now whenever there is something official everyone knows boss tells you to give 20% discount you are not going to listen to it you will say boss put it on mail why because we know that mail is official communication even if you don't know the technology behind it as a requirement in every country there is an archival and retention period of few years and in during those period if some particular thing is litigated you can even put legal hold on that but everyone knows mail means official so now if you have teams chat use because it was an urgent requirement remember it's equally official why because the same archival policy and retentions policy which is applied to email can be applied to teams chat you don't have to worry about it as a user but make sure it is protecting your interest as well as organizational interest and in case there is a dispute the e discovery module works on email chat and all kinds of microsoft containers where you can use this searching capability for e discovery create outputs and then redact them if required and then give a controlled version of the output to the other litigating party as well all this is out of the box you don't as a user you don't have to do anything as a user you have to just start using it now there is another problem with teams chat which is commonly not understood or many people get irritated with it every chat software allows you to chat with people one on one and allow you to create groups but teams chat is over smart 
that creates meetings also means you attend a meeting till then the meeting is in calendar but after the meeting is over that lands up in chat and many people either get confused or irritated or both so why does this happen for a very simple reason anything which is irritating must be useful remember that at least in the context of microsoft features in this slide itself there are 12 different apps i could have used for creating attending a meeting audio video call screen sharing all of them have something in common start meeting button and of course end meeting button end meeting click that button the software says my job is done at upar kar diya abhi now whatever it is your problem the technically the meeting is over but really there is nothing to be done then why did you do the meeting in the first place who is going to do all this the answer is none of them the answer is you and how are you going to do it oh that i know the 30 years ago i kar rahe right click on calendar reply to all flood each other's inbox sounds familiar yes sounds efficient no we are back to square one so that is why team said stop troubling each other by sending mails even though it is my own product called outlook don't misuse it allow yourself to not have those unnecessary mails instead continue that collaboration in chat so this is a best practice this is not an irritant so what do you have to tell people now after the meeting is over please don't send any follow up mails about that go to the meeting because is there in chat all the people who are a part of the meeting are already there so whatever collaboration you want do there meeting notes are here meeting related files are there you can upload more files there even the whiteboard if you have used in the meeting is not a screenshot it's a live for collaboration so that is what i mean by efficiency of all kinds of collaboration but this was about what kind of collaboration well this was about the type of collaboration where it was teamwork but it was single task and multiple people now when it comes to multiple related tasks what does that mean formally let's call it a project and then we will explore that part when you say a project whether you are using a project management tool or not we have to form the project team usually it will be cross functional exclude include external parties as well there will be a project plan and a deadline and all that now all these people have to know what each other is doing how do we do that yes even if you are using ms project the data goes to the project manager project manager has to send mail to people about status finally i send a mail every day to everyone saying i did this <laughs> everyone is sending a mail like this to everyone every day so imagine how many mails will come <laughs> you don't have to imagine i'll just say show you a simple calculation the exact number doesn't matter but you get the idea You see, my frequency is not daily; it's weekly. Still, divide by seven. That's thousand. And this is what one project. What happened? Meetings happened. Files were created. Updates of the files. Task list and this and that. This is one project. Second project. Third project. Plus regular mail. Again, I am asking same question. Sounds familiar? Yes. Sounds efficient? No. What is IT doing for thirty years? So. <laughs> It's a very good. I am myself an IT person. Don't take it personally. Actually, I am not even an IT person. I am a gynecologist. I was in hardcore IT for 15 years, and last 15 years, I am doing efficiency improvement. But now, mind, it's a question for the entire industry, not the IT person. What are we doing? Problem? What is it? Problem? What is it? So, all of you know problem solving. Do you really think we want to be inefficient? Consciously, nobody wants that. So, think. how do you solve problems root cause analysis so what is the root cause there seem to be two candidates one is the inbox and one is the project which one is bad none of them are bad think again how many inboxes you have one how many projects you have more than one okay that's life so what is the problem problem is something which is always one is routinely being used to manage something which is always more than one from what angle does the even the thought sound efficient maybe earlier we didn't have a choice fine but now we have 
So first thing, they stop doing it. Stop doing it. But you can't say I won't manage projects, of course. So you need to find an alternative. That alternative means create a separate place for each project. Where? Not in inbox. Then where? Teams. But wait, please do not create a group chat there. That's another very common mistake. Group chat is not for managing projects. Group chat is for simple ad hoc collaboration, which is short term. Projects are long term. Short term means chat. Long term does not mean chat. Remember that. So what do we do? Oh, we just go and create projects. Separate team in teams. How do you do that? You go to teams, not chat. Go to teams, part of teams and say create a team. Add the team members there and then do whatever you want there. So now if you compare, if I'm not using teams and I'm a part of four projects, how do I find out what is happening in a project? I go to the dumping ground called uh, what? Inbox, search on project name. I get a smaller version of the dumping ground. I am still not clear. More effort, less impact. Compare that with teams. Assuming I have already created those four projects in teams. Without search, I can see each one of them. And I don't even have to click on all of them. Only the unread one I click on. Look at any notifications and I'm done. Less effort and more impact less email also thousands of emails less so that is what i mean so this is how you manage projects but problem we have thousands hundreds whatever number of people you have in your company is every person even at the lowest level a part of a project maybe maybe not so then they don't use teams part of teams sounds like that but no that's not correct you don't have to be a part of a big formal project to start using teams this way let me give you a generic use case. When specifics are confusing, you make it generic. So think, few people, same people, are working on a long-term basis for a common objective. Few people, long-term, common objective. What are they going to do? They are going to discuss. They will create some related files, action items, follow-ups, and this will happen over meetings. So when this plus this plus this plus this plus this, I did not utter the word project. Even if it is not a project, you should not do it in email because that is where it is happening. This is beyond project, random. So that also should happen on Teams. How does it happen on Teams? What are the use cases? Reviews, very, very common. Everyone is a part of review. Shared task list doesn't just remain a shared task list. There will be meetings around it. There will be discussions around it. Any common data entry, any common data entry. Please don't do common data entry on Excel. Please do it using list. I will show this to you immediately after this. Departmental shares. Of course, we still have those file shares. Please convert them to Teams. Some of you may have converted it to SharePoint. SharePoint is difficult to manage as a user, difficult to understand. And SharePoint only does file sharing properly. Teams does that plus many more things. So please convert your departmental shares to Teams and all, all the departmental people there. That's a use for teams. Group mailboxes, a shared mailbox, multiple people handling, whether it is for procurement, recruitment, whatever. Multiple mails coming, many people looking at the same mail, nobody knows who is handling which. Do that in teams. And recurring meetings. The moment you are about to create a recurring meeting, stop, that's a mistake. Do it in teams. So all these are use cases for teams. None of them are formal projects. So just to clarify about common data entry, what happens in common data entry? We do this, create an Excel file, put some random column names, send it to 20 people. Hopefully they will reply to me and then I will consolidate the data and then make some reports. Very, very common requirement. Stop doing that, please. There is a better way to do that. That's called lists. It's a part of every Office 365. Basically it's a SharePoint list with some extra features. So what do you do? Don't create that file in Excel. Go to list the same columns you create here. In fact, Excel gives you only two data types. This gives you so many more data types. Better. It's not just equivalent. It's better. Not only that, conditional formatting is out of the box. Lots of validations, including mandatory and unique value enforcement. 
So once this is done, now you want other people to. So how do you do that? You go to sharing. This dialogue is important. This is for file sharing, any kind of sharing, similar dialogue you will see now. So specific people, of course, and then those specific people will get a link. But you don't want those people to see each other's data. That's why we send random Excel file separately. That is also taken care of. In settings, just enable these two settings. So there is security also plus efficiency. And now people will add their own data. They can see only their data. So for example, here, this is boss entering that list. Boss can see only the items added by boss. This is the same list added by assistant. Same list, but assistant can see only assistant's data. But when the owner goes there, which is me, I will see all the data entered by everyone. Data can still be entered in a grid view like Excel and validations are live. Finally, when the data is accumulating, you want a report. No problem. So export to Excel. It is not a dump. It's a live connection. So you create a pivot table. Fine. But next time data has changed, you don't have to worry. Right click refresh or better still go to the connection properties and say refresh when opening the file. So this is still helping you use an Excel for analysis. That is what it is meant for. And it is not troubling you by using Excel for what is for never meant for data entry. So best of both worlds. That is what I mean. Which tool to use when and how. So now that we have created teams for project, what do you do? You create a team, add team members to it. Please allow external vendors to be added because they are a part of the project. Why shouldn't they be added? There's no security risk there. They become a part of Azure AD B2C and there is very good governance available for managing all that beautifully in Azure Active Directory. So utilize Azure AD's capabilities of not just managing authentication internally, but external vendors, suppliers, outsourced agencies, consultants, and even key customers for that matter. So once you create a team, whatever happens in the team, you can manage within the team without sending a single mail to each other. So what can we do in teams? Let's see. So I have created a team, for example, here is a team for product launch. Now product launch can be a complex thing. So I don't want to just discuss everything about product launch in the default place called general channel. So I've created separate channels for different aspects or different parallel threads of execution or modules. Similarly, in procurement, there is a procurement team, but every RFP is a separate channel. Monthly review is not a project, but I created a team for that. And every meeting or every monthly meeting or whatever frequency is a separate channel. So this is the broad common objective. These are the sub objectives. Every member of the team has access to all of them unless you make a private channel. Now, what do we do inside? Well, Inside every channel, you can discuss every channel. You can discuss this does look like chat, but this is not chat. Why? Because unlike chat, this has a reply button. So when is the event? This is a question in reply to chat. If I had done that, this would have come down and then I click on it. Then I will be taken to the previous instance. Then again, click then previous instance. And there is some other question going on here. This, if I reply, this will get mixed up with that other reply. That does not happen here. This is structured work. Chat is unstructured work. Remember, that is why you should not use chat or group chat for project management. Because in a chat, what was discussed seven days back is not very relevant. But in a project, what was decided six months back is absolutely relevant. So that's why you use channels instead of chat. And from a security and compliance point of view, of course, everything we discussed is still completely applicable, whether it is chat or channel. So you're not missing out on anything. So audit trail, absolutely data loss protection, retention and archival, which we talked about for email. Same thing here. A discovery in case of disputes. If any suspicious activity you want to proactively find out, you can create alerts and it'll tell you live. And if you want to protect information and you have labeling, you can also do that. All of this happening behind the scenes while people are conveniently working in one tool instead of jumping 
across tools. So now you must be understanding security and productivity are not two different aspects. In fact, when you increase security, usually productivity suffers. When you increase productivity, security is compromised. So it's always a tussle, conflict, whatever you want to call it. Who wins? Obviously security wins. And anyway, people are not efficient. So what matter? Now, this is no longer a conflict because productivity tools are created by Microsoft. Security apps are also created by Microsoft. It is this plus this. And this part, even customers who have Microsoft platform have not fully understood. So please, please explore, explore these tools in a conjunction as an integrated platform rather than saying, I only look at infra, I will look at that Azure ready only. I look at compliance, I'll only look at compliance portal and productivity. Oh, nobody is bothered. No, you have to do a combined evaluation. Then you will understand how beautifully each of these components is designed to enhance rather than hamper the other component. And the best way to start is this. Even if you have the uh, lowest end version of any kind of Office 365, you will see these three numbers. So please go and see it. Even if you are going to evaluate Office 365, even if you have five users, you will get these three numbers. These are very important. It is actually telling you based on whatever components of Microsoft platform you have and based on how they are configured, what is your current level or posture as we call it in security terms? What is the level of your security, compliance and productivity? And uh, it doesn't just give you a number. It tells you how it is calculated. Each one is broken down into sub components. Even those are calculated based on a logic which is mentioned here as to how it is calculated. It even gives you peer benchmark means what Microsoft has millions of customers. They know all customers and their numbers. They are not going to tell you that that is confidential, but they can tell you in your region companies with similar number of users. What is their average benchmark and where is that? So in this case, I'm better compared to similar customers or companies. So like that, you can actually put a peer benchmark as well. And then when you go down, it doesn't just tell you these are the numbers. Obviously, that wouldn't make any sense. So what does it then tell you? It tells you how to improve those scores, which is brilliant. And it gives you information about exactly what score to increase. How does it tell you that? Well, it is actionable guidance. It is not just thought processing do zero trust. It's like saying do digital transformation. So it tells you under each category what to do and it gives you what exactly is to be done and why. And it gives you if you do this, how much your score will increase. Now there is another column there called which tool to use. And obviously there you will see some Microsoft product name, but that does not mean Microsoft is forcing you to buy only Microsoft products. You can say I have done this particular thing using a third party product as well. In respect of which tool you use, this is actionable, absolutely valuable guidance. You would have to spend enormous amount of time and money and hire multiple consultants to get this. And this is something people just don't understand. And because people don't understand it, the most important and common activity we do in this whole context is called files, which is absolutely inefficiently managed. But before we go to file management, what else can we do in teams? This is about discussion. This is about files, which we will discuss a little later. But in addition, because this is a project long term, there will be an action plan. So where do you put that action plan? It's a task list, but it's not my task list. It is a it is what it's a shared task list. So where should I put it? Well, I should put it somewhere in the teams. Now that is not Excel. You add this. This is a plus sign. Very powerful. Like I showed in Power Automate here also hundreds of applications integrate. And then the most commonly used is this guy called Planner. So what is Planner? Planner is a shared task list. This is the logo. Remember, then you add tasks. Many tasks you can add. You can categorize them 
bucket them task deadline delegation multiple people delegation no problem within a task sub task no problem no linkages across tasks if you want that you need a formal project management software but everyone has visibility to this you can rearrange them like a kanban board and eliminate random review meetings kya chal raha hai dekhna hai do click karo dikh raha hai simple of course you want graphical view no problem and now many people keep asking how will i get task reminders where will i put then they put the task in excel excel doesn't give reminder then they write some random vba code it's a disaster everything has been thought out so if you things in planner there are settings which you can configure and people will get reminders when someone assigns a task to you and when it is late due today so exactly what you want configurable auditable all that and uh, all this of course you want to see on mobile but before we go to mobile we have a different problem now i am a part of multiple projects each project will have at least one task list and in each task list i will have some tasks so how do i know my tasks across all these projects i don't want to go and copy paste so that is also thought of so what do you do in that case you go to this three dots here and again go to tasks so this gives you a compiled combined consolidated list of tasks assigned to me across all the projects and of course you want to see it on mobile as well no worries the same to do app shows you your work as well as project specific work and then you can plan by saying okay this part i will do today this part i'll do today this is daily management long term management to do in calendar as i have already showed you so this is how the entire thing works but one critical component of all this collaboration we have still not touched because whether it is email chat or channel or whatever else you can think of there is one thing which is common which is files and those are getting created using all kinds of things every day and what are the commonest places where files are created well you know i already showed you but still word excel powerpoint kind of things and maybe pdfs and some other files also now when you create file you create it but eventually someone will be a part of it i will need to send the file to others if it is not urgent i will attach it to email if it is urgent i will put it on group chat in either case what happened originally it was one file then i made it multiple copies people sent it back then multiple copy paste copy paste copy paste i get salary i am very happy very efficient and then the entire job is done after whatever number of copy paste file is not yet final because right now what each one has done i know they don't know so one more round one more round whatever number of copies floating around and finally whatever happens 27 copies is called team work same story i don't have to even repeat the question now i am sure you are asking that question to yourself sound familiar yes sounds efficient no so what is the problem problem is not with technology problem is we just got habituated to it because it works we just use it without thinking number one second nobody told us that there is an eminently better way to do that and nobody created that standard operating procedure here is the sop all new files at least must go to one drive no questions asked this looks too formal okay i'll give you an informal way of saying it this is your enemy never click on it this is your best friend click on it now why not just because i am saying but many people don't know why that's why they don't do it so many people don't know why i should take this trouble by the way this is not trouble this click instead of here you are clicking here no extra effort now all the benefits of this what are the benefits of storing on pc i have a sense of possessiveness i can open and do whatever i want with the file anytime when i don't have internet absolutely the same thing will continue even if you store the file on one drive because even if it is on one drive it is first stored locally it is always available to you offline unless you say so and you can edit it offline it will sync automatically so nothing from the point of view of what you are already used to is reduced in fact in addition to what you are expecting you get 12 benefits some benefits wherever the word auto comes is automatic 
I just store it on one drive. I am automatically getting all those benefits. I have not mentioned one here called uh, auto backup because once the file is synced, even if your hard disk fails, you can just buy a new hard disk, log in, all files will come back. So implicit backup restore. But the biggest benefit is from the point of view of collaboration. These are personal benefits. Fine. But collaboration, I know not a single customer and I'm really sad about it. And they have randomly blocked external sharing of files. That is the worst way of managing it. Because they, why? Apparently there is a security risk. Really? So when you send a file as attachment, which you have been doing for 30 years, there was no security risk. When you send a file as attachment, what control you have or what happens to the file? Zero. Absolutely no audit trail. And then file when it is to be shared, what do people do today? Oh, file is on one drive. Okay, great. But then uh, what do I do? Oh, I go to Outlook, then attach. Then I see cloud file, but I don't notice it. And then it asks me this question. 99% people click here. Either they don't know, don't want to, resist, blocked on multiple reasons. Finally, inefficiency. What is the point? So please stop doing it. Please stop sending files. Start sharing. If you are IT or security person, please enable that, including for external parties. I'll tell you why. And this sharing dialogue, you have to teach people because before when you did that, you had no control. Now you don't have to go to Outlook also. The share button is there itself. But if it's an AutoCAD file, CorelDRAW file, 100 MB file, 1 GB video, you know what people are doing? You can't email it also. So they are going to some random box. You send it, I send it. That's very insecure applications. Official data going there. Designs, engineering drawings, kind of things because they are heavy files. They are going through random unmanaged apps. That's shadow IT. Why is that shadow IT happening? Because large files cannot be sent by email. Do you know OneDrive, non-Microsoft file, single file can be 250 GB and with full security and all those controls we have seen. So please encourage people to use this dialogue. Make this the default, not this because this creates anonymous link. But the benefit here is productivity because I'm not creating a copy of the file. So whatever people do, the file remains single, zero copy paste. And I can control the security. I can control how long to allow edit. I can control download also. So if I want, I can choose specific people and allow editing my control. I can stop that at any point of time. And then I can add internal as well as external people. Please don't block this. By blocking it, you are making life more unproductive, less efficient and less safe because people are either going to send attachments or they are going to use some random third party cloud. Now, when I add external parties, they are actually safer because the external party will have to prove that they own that email ID. Many people don't know this. So if this vendor at Gmail opens this link, they will have to type the email ID again. They will get an OTP and a separate email. And only when they type the OTP, the file will open. It's safer. So by virtue of putting files on this, what are you really getting? Many benefits which are impossible to get with email attachments. Many of these we have already discussed. None of them are available. So now you think which one is better. So please encourage sharing and discourage attachments unless they are a statutory requirement, which is fine. And the same logic goes for not allowing external people to be added to team's team because if they are a part of official collaboration if you don't allow them to be added to teams the internal collaboration is efficient externally people are sending the same file as attachment what's the point in fact here if someone makes a mistake what happens we have automatic versioning automatic versioning means what for every file including non microsoft files up to 500 versions are stored so anything mistake happens, you can always revert to the previous version. And the 1TB or whatever quota you have, version space is not counted, only the base file version. Bottom line, by virtue of doing all this, you are getting efficiency plus security. So now we are in a position to understand how all this works. But despite all that, there will be some kind of attempts of automation people are doing in an unstructured manner 
and as IT that automation has not reached there. That is where our platform comes into picture where you can teach this to users and allow them to create UI, store data in a structured place, perform automation actions and also do analytics. And that is the other part. And this part is very, very rich and very, very simple to do. And that is what is done using Power Apps. This is like not the formal app store. This is your app store. So you install Power Apps for everyone on mobile. On day one, there are no apps in it. But now anybody with rights can create apps, submit them there and people internally can start using them from idea to deployment very, very quick. And it's not its primitive. It's very sophisticated user interface can be created. All kinds of controls are available and you can start simple and go further by integrating it with your LOB applications as well. Because the data of LOB apps is already in structured place. But the unstructured automation which people are currently doing by randomly sending mails and chat, that is the place where Power Apps and Power Automate can help you. And then where to put the data? Yes, you can put it in your formal database, but we have something called database plus plus where it is a formal database. But in addition to database, it also allows you to define business logic in simple manner, which users can understand. And it also gives you out of the box integration with everything we have seen in security compliance and governance. And all this, one more aspect of it, people have not understood is once you put some data on Microsoft platform, there is a humongous benefit of doing it. And because people you don't know that, people are scared of so-called cloud. They think is my data safe or not? I don't know. That's why OneDrive is not used. That's why chat is not used for formal purposes. So wherever your data is on Microsoft platform, remember when your data, customer data leaks, what happens? You have risk, isn't it? What kind of risk do you have? You have various types of business impact. If there is data leakage from your side, what kind of business impact? All of this and more. Agreed. Now take a step back and think when you put your data on Microsoft platform, don't you think the same regulations apply to Microsoft? The answer is no. The same regulations don't apply to Microsoft. Many, many more regulations apply to Microsoft. Because Microsoft is a global organization, all global standards, compliance requirements apply. All US government also applies. Plus all industry specific also applies because Microsoft has millions of customers across industries and all regional also apply for those countries where regulations are already published. So now you think whatever your company is, whichever industry you are in, do you think all of these you are applying to? No, you are going to be getting a subset of these. So just by virtue of putting something on Microsoft platform, you are going to get benefit of all these without any extra effort. So from compliance point of view, when you see that compliance score, notice this is the compliance score. So if I go to compliance manager, you'll be surprised to know of something which many people have not noticed in the compliance score itself. What is that? When you go to the score, what you see is the number. Yes, that number is calculated somehow. How it is calculated is mentioned there, but very important part is often missed. So let it come up, then I'll show you. So what is it actually showing you? Yes, you got whatever number of points you got. But below that, look at this. Yes, your score is whatever. Out of these 22,000 points, you got 12,000 whatever points without doing anything because your data is on Microsoft. It is a risk and liability for Microsoft also. So all that has already been done. That is the benefit out of the box compliance. And there are some things Microsoft can't do because they are related to your organization. So those action points are mentioned, which you can go and apply. So this is how, what I'm trying to tell you is, it's a combination of all these things put together. When I say all these things, what am I talking about? Security, productivity and compliance put together. So I know I have been talking a lot. You will have questions. 
So before I stop, few action items for you. One is please stop all macros by disabling all macros. Only allow certified macro. Please implement passwordless authentication. If you are not enabled at least two factor authentication, you are already hacked. Passwordless means you enter the username, password is not asked, it will show your number. On the mobile, implement Microsoft Authenticator. Takes two minutes to do it. And then you just touch the number and you're logged in. This is absolutely immediate improvement in your security stature with very little extra effort. Show this to your bosses and let the boss send a mail to everyone saying, Kal se aisa login karo. So that is the next action item. And then that's what I was talking about. Educate top management about the combined improvement in efficiency plus security and then it will they will help you in encouraging all this and this is another place where top management can help you and enable user self-service especially for security like password reset and multi-factor authentication configuration and finally all this i know i have covered too many things in little while even if you have office 365 you must be confused so the best way to understand the real applicable power of this platform is to conduct a combined integrated pilot of the highest available M365 product set, which is E5 currently. And do a pilot with users inside included so that you can actually see productivity, security, compliance and privacy getting enhanced. I hope you found this session useful. Do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also check out my book about Microsoft 365 best practices. That's all from me. Thank you.